Hello, Piney 6th graders, and once again, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching. Folks, quick shout out to the trivia champions from last week's Zoom chats. We had Caden, Carter, Ashton, Anna, and Cam were our folks who got the trivia question closest for those of you who weren't there, or maybe those of you who don't remember, that's fine. Our question was, what's the greatest range in temperatures ever recorded in one day at the St. Louis, Missouri weather station? And the answer was 60 degrees, which is a whopper. On a day in November, <coughs> excuse me, November 1911, the high temperature was 78 and the low was 18. And that was the biggest range ever recorded, pretty crazy. Well, we are going to take a brief break from weather-related stuff. Folks, last week, Earth Day happened, and this guy missed it. And truthfully, for Earth Day this year, the theme is an important enough when I feel it's better late than never. So we're going to take a quick break from weather, whether, <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that, whether you're sick of weather or not, um, you'll get a quick break of it. And... We're going to talk about the theme for Earth Day this year. That theme, many of you, I hope, have already heard of. If you haven't, well, mm, it's time, because it is one of the most pressing issues on planet Earth right now, and that is plastic pollution. Okay, now, why not just say, well, litter or things like that? Well, we could talk about paper, and it's not good to throw paper just out in a ditch somewhere, throw it out. Don't recycle it. But paper will break down. Paper is a natural material, right? It's made of wood fibers that have been pressed flat. Okay, so if paper ends up out in nature, it will break down. Okay, it will eventually just become part of the soil. That is not true of plastic. Plastic is made of chemicals that will last hundreds or even thousands of years. Okay, so for today, I want to talk about a little bit about how this is a kind of a personal issue for me. So I live in a house that's on a street that's about as busy as Piney Road. Okay, so think of the street that goes in front of our elementary school, and that's about how busy my street is. So we get a decent amount of traffic. But I have a drainage culvert or a ditch that goes in front of my house to kind of funnel rainwater down towards a storm drain. And in that ditch, basically anything people throw out their window, it settles in that ditch. And every week before I mow the grass, or at least I try to, okay, I go out and pick up the plastic so I don't grind the plastic into tiny little bits with the lawnmower. Well, folks, in just one week, here is what I found in my front yard, okay? All plastic pollution. We had a water bottle label. We had part of a survey flag. We had ooh, another little part of a label, and that's definitely plastic there. We had some styrofoam packaging, and the video will talk about styrofoam and why it creates its own set of issues. Okay, we had not just one, not just two, but we had three separate plastic bottles. One, two, three. Okay. So we had that. We had yet another food wrapper, also made of plastic, also a little bit of foil there. And then... Last but not least, we had a big newspaper wrapper, which was the biggest piece of plastic that I was able to find. So guys, just in one week, okay, and this is a pretty typical week, that's what I found, okay? So you say, well, why does that matter so much? Are we really concerned about Mr. Wire's yard? No, we're not. Well, at least not in the big sense, we're not. The problem is where this plastic goes. And if you've heard about this issue before, you know the surprising answer is, the oceans, okay, because water, okay, always drains downhill, okay, so you may not think that that creek that's somewhere near your house or apartment, you say, oh, okay, there goes the creek just wandering off somewhere. Well, it drains downhill, and it drains to maybe a small river nearby, which in this part of the world always drains to the Mississippi eventually, and the Mississippi dumps out in the Gulf of Mexico, so eventually the Gulf of Mexico meets up with the Atlantic Ocean and boom. So if a piece of trash finds its way into a creek here, it will find its way into the Atlantic Ocean eventually unless somebody picks it up and puts it where it belongs. So this is a huge, huge issue, not just for marine or ocean creatures, but also for us. 
Okay, now one different thing about this Ed Puzzle compared to the others is it will have writing questions instead of multiple choice. Yes, I can see your answers. Yes, I will look at them. This is an issue I really care about, so I really want to see what you have to say. So I will go through the responses that come in. I will score them. Okay, so please do a good job. You'll notice if it says, like, give two examples. Well, please give two examples. If it asks for, you know, a specific example from the video, please make sure you say a specific example from the video. And as always with Ed Puzzle, one of my favorite things about it, there's that little rewatch button. And if you get to a question and you're not sure, just rewatch. Video itself is only four minutes long, so shouldn't take you too long at all, even if you rewatch things a couple times and you type out pretty detailed answers. As always, if you have questions, please shoot me an email. I try, I try to check, and I'm pretty good about checking multiple times a day, so you don't hopefully have to wait too long to hear back from me. But hope you enjoyed the assignment. I uh, hope it kind of resonates or you know hits you in the heart where we can try to start solving this problem together because it is an important one. All right, folks, take care. Hope you have a nice day, and until next time, see ya.